The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good evening, everyone. We've almost um, just on the dot for 8 o'clock. We'll um, just wait for a few more people to join us. My name's John Cox, and we're doing the um, webinar tonight with um, guest speaker Mark Ianson. So um, for you, those of you who have not been on the webinar before, there's a, a box in the corner, so you can um, put your hand in the air if um, Mark wants to ask a few questions, and um, also type questions in the box as we go along. I think um, the aim really is to type your questions in and then we can put them to the main man towards the end of the evening. So um, we'll let a few more people join us. I presume everyone can hear us loud and clear. You can put your hands in the air, as they say, and then we can um, move on out, really. So um, if I can just go through... Um, my name is John Cox. I'm um, a co-host of the Bucks Property Meet, but also part of the Property Investment Academy, which should be on your screens at the moment. So this has been recently set up. Its um, aim really is to give access to some free training, free webinars like tonight, some pre-meets around the UK's property meets, and also some workshops. We've got um, a very knowledgeable David Humphreys in the middle of the picture that you can see on your screens now, it's providing lots of content, and then we've got some external speakers. Uh, Richard Simmons is a person on the left in the photo, runs the Surrey Property Exchange, which is a great property meet for those who have not been there, and um, my ugly muck shot is the one on the right, co-host along with Teresa Hooper at the Bucks Property Meet. So have a look at the um, website at some point, and uh, there's some see free goodies on there, and uh, we can... Um, Go on from there, really. So the aim of tonight really is to um, get your phones ringing red hot, and then when you're getting some leads, we're going to help close them down. So the per best person we feel to present that sort of information is none other than Shine Retarin, Mark Ianson. So Mark, are you there? Yeah, hey John, evening everybody, and thanks for coming on the webinar tonight. So I'm just going to pass over control to Mr. Ianson, and he's going to take it from there. So, you have control. All right, so show my screen. I think, can everyone see the screen there? It's just about to come up, I'm sure. Sometimes it takes a couple of seconds yep, to go Yeah, we're on. live. You've got it, okay. Well, good evening, everybody. My name's Mark Ianson, and this webinar, the next sort of hour, 15 minutes or so, is about getting more leads and converting more leads into deals. So what we'll do without further ado, for those who don't know me, um, I started in property, or bought my first property in 92, 93. I bought a dual upper and swapped it for two properties from a developer and that was my start. And none of my family had two properties, none of my friends had two properties. So I thought I was making it at um, the ripe old age of 27. Um, <clears throat> and it kind of grew from there. Now we're in, I got into trading property and foreign property. And, uh, and this year, 2012, to jump forward a bit, um, I started speaking at networking events and showing people um, how to get leads and how to turn those leads into deals. And, and I've, I've got the bug of speaking and showing people how to do it because it's, it's my passion. There's, there's three skills, really. It's how to get the leads, how to turn the leads into deals, and then how to trade the deals, um, or keep them if you're building a portfolio. Um, but trading deals isn't a standalone strategy. Um, it's something that I think everybody should do, because if you're just buying property, at some point you'll run out of money. Um, and we all do. Uh, we run out of deposits. And trading stuff that you that might not suit you or you don't want uh, will just help you cash flow and it will help you raise the deposits quicker. So that's me and that's a few pictures of me at different property networking events um, around the country. So let's crack on um, with, that, with all the content. First of all, I'd like to show you a couple of deals um, and show you what we've done with them. And I think the first one is our uh, lease option deal. Okay. All right, this is a property in Morecambe and it's actually over three floors. It's three separate properties. It's a two-bed flat on the ground floor, a one-bed flat on the first floor, and then a one-bed flat on the on the second floor. 
and this property came to us uh, via referral. Uh, the asking price at the time of rough valuation was about 160. The mortgage on the property, outstanding mortgage, was 148. So on this particular deal, there's actually there's no room to offer a below market value offer. So there's no, it looks like there's no deal there. And uh, what I do, I do two types of deal: do lease options or a below market value deal um, with a vendor. So with 12 grand equity, um, this took a drive down to Portsmouth um, to see the landlady. It's actually a landlady that, that uh, owned the property, and it was causing us some problems because um, the tenants were kicking the place about a bit, weren't paying the rent, um, they pretended not to speak English when she was around, and it, it's five and a half hours from Plymouth to, to, uh, to Mo uh, sorry, Portsmouth to Morecambe. Um, so she was having a bit of a problem with it. Um, what I did was I offered to take the property off her hands on a 12-year lease option deal. Um, and because I'm based in Northamptonshire, it's still about four hours, four and a half hour drive for me up to Morecambe. So instead of keeping the deal because it doesn't suit my portfolio and doesn't suit uh, my strategy, I decided to trade the deal. So we sold the deal out at 6995 um, and to put a deal like this together costs around £1,500. Um, and that's in legal fees on both sides. We pay the legal fees on the seller side and we pay the legal fees on the buyer side and then just charge an overall fee. So that's about uh, 6995 Take that off the um, take the packaging fee off that and we're left with a net profit of 5495 for trading the deal. So there's no actual financial outlay for me apart from the, the fuel cost down to Portsmouth to speak to the vendor um, and nothing else. Really. There's no other costs um, apart from the packaging. So net profit on that one was four nine, uh, 5495 Now what I do is I try and work win-win-win. So the win for the vendor in this case is um, she doesn't have to drive the distance to look after the property anymore. She can concentrate in Portsmouth where she's based. The win for the investor that buys the deal um, was actually based in Manchester, which is only about um, half an hour away from Morecambe. So he's now got a 12-year um, property, uh, sorry, property for 12 years on a contract that cash flows at about 785 a month. Um, and any any capital growth from here from now over the next 12 years is his profit as well for looking after and managing the property. So cash, in 12 years' time, it, it could double in value. That's a bit finger in the air, so we don't know yet. Um, but it could take out 100,000 in capital growth over the next 12 years. And 12 times 785 uh, pounds per month in, in cash flow. So there's a win for the investor who's based up in Manchester. And then the win for me, of course, is that I get £5,495 cash at bank. So three wins, um, everyone's happy. And some say, well, you're selling the cream there because um, the investor's going to make miles more money than you do. That's absolutely true. But I'm cash flowing my business and I'm not left with a property that's kind of four or five hours away uh, uh, for me. Um, so I'm getting the, the cash right now, so that's the advantage of doing that. And that's one type of deal. Um, the other type of deal we do, I'll show you the next one, is a, a BMV deal or a below market value offer deal. This one is a four bed townhouse in Basildon in Essex. And in this case, it's a, a divorce case, um, husband and wife splitting up. They put the house on the market for 219995 we agreed a price with them uh, at 148, and that was uh, we do a I do a special thing. I don't haggle with people or negotiate with people necessarily. What I do is I build my offer from the ground up. So I work out the mortgage, which in this case was 96,000, and then I start adding in what these perceive as problems um, to get to a final offer, which was 148. Now I could have kept this deal because that's good equity, 219 to 148. That's good equity. But again, it's in Basildon, it's two hours from me, around the M25, which is one of the, as I'm sure you're aware, one of the busiest motorways in, in, in England. And so I thought, ah, two hours away, that, that's a bit, a bit much to manage. So what I did with this was um, I sold it for 157500 to an investor, which is still a great discount, charged uh, 6995 as a fee, and this particular deal cost uh, 3000 to put together with brokers, valuers, um, and uh, legals and such for. So the net profit to me was the difference between the 157500 and the buying price of 148 plus the packaging fee of 6995 so it came to a net profit of £13,495. So the win for the vendor is, uh, in this case, if they're getting divorced so they can get out of the property and go their, their separate ways. <coughs> the win for the investor is that 
he bans a property with over fifty thousand pounds in equity in it, and the win for me is that um, I get thirteen thousand four hundred ninety-five pounds uh, cash at bank, uh, and I get it straight away because um, as soon as it completes, it's 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 funds in. So those are the two types of deal that um, I, I generally do, and these two particular deals came in the same month. So the Morgan one was five four nine five. The Basildon uh, property was thirteen four nine five. So therefore, the total profits in that month uh, for the business was eighteen thousand nine hundred ninety pounds. And uh, this is a good month. Uh, eighteen thousand nine hundred ninety pounds profit in a month is pretty good. Um, but it only took two deals. And on the Morgan deal, it was a two hour drive down to Plymouth to see the to see the vendor. In Basildon, it was a two hour drive down to Essex um, to see the vendor. And then maybe an hour meet, hour and fifteen uh, meeting, and then a drive back home again. So all in all, about ten to twelve hours work, and um, getting the two getting the two deals nailed down in the same month. That's a good profit month. It's, it's, it's not the same every month. Um, they're two decent deals. I'm fell in the same month, but <coughs> um, you can see there with a couple of deals and a, and a bit of creativity, um, you can easily rack up uh, a decent profit every month, and that's just from trading the deals. I know we're sort of taking questions at the end, but just one one thing: sure. what sort of hours would you have put into the deals from start to finish? I know they've obviously concluded in a month, but roughly, um, it's about ten hours work per deal um, for for per, for a deal. Yeah, oh. so about twenty hours work. Yeah. It, it's not work that happens in um, in whole blocks. It's kind of there's a call to a solicitor, there's an email yeah. to send, there's an attachment or a piece of paper, uh, and these kind of run concurrently with things that, other things that you might be doing. So about twenty hours work. And, and we've got two deals knitting nearly £19,000. Excellent. Brilliant. So the first thing is, when I get onto a patch, because I've run quite a few patches, uh, one in the northeast, uh, up there we've got someone in there running it for us now, uh, one in North Warwickshire, which um, we've got someone in there running that one now for us. Um, but when I set in, 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 a, in a new patch, a brand new patch to work, I, I, I put a plan together. And I believe everyone should put a plan together of what they're doing. Uh, and this is my plan uh, in an area, so it's actually a four-week plan, we've got three weeks on here, but it's actually a four-week plan. And the idea is to get to a deal from day one to day 28, um, with a deal on the table at day 28. It won't be completed by then, uh, necessarily, that's a bit unrealistic, <coughs> um, but you've got a deal uh, on day 28. So in week one, we'd source some local newspapers, we'd source a printer, we'd do, convert some letter templates that we've got to, you know, to mirror our business. We play some ad cards in business in, in other businesses around the patch or around the area. We source a power team. Um, if it's if it's a brand new patch and you're starting out, then obviously you've got to source a power team from scratch. And I've been doing it a while, so um, I've already got my team in place. We practiced a bit of website building if you wanted one, and you you knew you needed to prove that you existed as a business. We source some CRM, and I'll go onto that uh, CRM uh, later on. Then we define the patch. So. Um, we'd get into Waterstones and we'd get the uh, organ survey maps of the area, um, one to 50,000 or one to 25,000, it doesn't matter which one. Um, but please don't use road maps because what the organ survey maps do is they go down to house level and you can tell what types of houses are on the streets um, using the organ survey. Um, then nip into week two. If you wanted to go electronic, uh, you know, PPC advertising, you'd source a Google AdWords course maybe if you didn't know how to do it. There's no particular need to do that. You can do it all manually if you want to. Um, but it's another another thing to do in week one. In week two, um, uh, we'd look places at uh, companies to deliver our leaflets once they've been printed. Uh, we'd check places for adverts, either newspapers and, and the businesses around the patch, the supermarkets, the betting shops, the post offices, the corner shops, all those types of things. We'd get in a virtual PA, uh, and the reason for the PA is that we'd, um, we actually want to be one step removed from the initial call from the lead. And, and the reason for that is, it stops us dropping into a haggle um, on the phone because quite a few people when they're um, desperate to sell a property or motivated to sell a property will visit two or three or four different websites and enter their details in and if they've had a call you know a couple of days before from somebody they get to learn about percentages and offers and stuff and sometimes vendors will phone me up and say uh, I've been on the uh, I've been on the website and I've, I've got an offer at 80% uh, of market value what, do, what percentage do you offer? And, and that can easily drop us into a little trap of getting of talking about numbers, and we don't want to at this stage. We just want to take details of the property, and a virtual PA can can do that for you. 
and the virtual PA yeah, presumably it's a brand is new patch. I was going to say the virtual PA, the virtual PA is presumably working to a script that you've given her, Mark. That they have, yeah, and the yeah. scripts, um, yeah, we, we give them the script and they run through the questions that we've told them. And, and of course, the virtual pay doesn't know anything about the deal or how to do the deal, mm. so they can't drop into a haggle or you know they can't um, mess the deal up for you just, just collecting details. Excellent. Um, then we've got some sales scripts because uh, we've got to create some scripts that we're going to use on the on the initial call to make the appointment, and then we're going to use some scripts when we go to visit the vendor in the house. Um, so we've got to create them if we haven't got them already. We might visit a few estate agents in the area um, and see what's selling, what what they're short of, what's fast moving, uh, what types of property go you know go quickly because we've got to decide on the strategy for the patch and what works right in the area. Um, my favourite is um, one that we run at the moment. Um, it's in North Warwickshire and, and it's just two and three bedroom terraced houses. We know all the estate agents in that in that particular area. Uh, we know what's coming on fast. We know who's been on the market for a while. Um, and you can use uh, Property B uh, to see what's what's moving and shaking in the area, and that will tag uh, Property B as a website that works in. Oh, sorry, it's a program, not a website, but it works inside Rightmove, and it will give you. Um, uh, it's like I think it's a toolbar thing. It seems to it gives you scripts, uh, you know, text inside the um, the Rightmove I'll, site and tells you if a property has been reduced or how long it's been in the market for. I'll cut cut the URL out and put it in everyone's box so they can go and have a look at it later. Yeah, brilliant job. Thanks very much. Um, then we might print some letter templates out uh, to, to match our business, whatever we've called ourselves. We're ABC, ABC Properties in an area. We might complete our first website then. Um, if we don't know lease options, then we should probably learn them uh, because that's uh, another tool in the toolbox that you can offer a vendor in a deal if there's no equity in the property. And lots of people, when they, when they find there's no equity, sometimes they throw the lead in the bin. And what we do is, well, in, in week two, is call everybody else that's advertising in the patch because uh, quite a lot of uh, investors that are in, operating in an area will throw leads in the bin that they don't, that don't suit their, their criteria if their portfolio building at the time. So they might pass on their leads to you as well. So it's a, another one to get, uh, another good place to get leads for free. Uh, we play, in week two, we play some more ad cards out there and get out in every business um, that we could. And generally, we operate a patch uh, initially of about 4,000 houses. Um, so we, what we're doing is swamping the ground with, with our advertising. Um, and we do as much for free as possible. So this doesn't cost anything particularly. Um, we do it as, as much as we can for free. And in week three, we'd get a leaflet sent out. Um, again, <coughs> different part of the area. Uh, we might role play a few vendor pitches. If you're brand new, then role play with your friends, your family, other property people at networking meetings, and just and, and, and play about with what you're saying to the vendor to make a, um, uh, you know, to make a deal happen. Uh, and of course, friends can be um, either nice friends and make it easy for you. That can be difficult as well because you're going to get some difficult vendors out there. So uh, another idea is to put a Facebook uh, page up or a group and advertise uh, what you do. You buy houses or you look after people in trouble financially. Um, that's a good way of advertising and also a good way of proving that you exist as a business. Week three then newspaper adverts that you might have. Um, uh, might have gathered, they start to appear. Um, so you, you need to buy the newspapers that they're into checking because what the uh, the classified guys say on the phone and what appears in the newspaper sometimes are two completely different things. When you ask for um, top page right because that's the best place to see an advert or you know the most looked at advert, um, it may not appear there, it may appear bottom left. And if you don't phone up and check them, and, um, You've just lost your money because no, uh, you might get a missed a missed advert. Whereas if you phone up, you could get three nights free. And um, so always buy the newspapers that your adverts are in. We then log any calls onto our CRM, and you can get your uh, virtual PA to do that for you. So they come straight into your CRM. And CRM is uh, customer relationship management software. Um, again, that's we can uh, we can do that free. It doesn't have to cost anything. There's there's quite a few different uh, programs out there that you can use. In week three, we might do our first vendor call as well. Um, so we need our scripts ready for when we do our first call because when we do our call, then uh, we're only selling an appointment. We just want to um, get an appointment. So we're going to see the vendor, and that's all we do. We're not talking numbers. We're not going into negotiation or haggling or anything. We're just making an appointment. So we've got a script for that. Uh, if we're doing the electronic method, the next one is uh, we might SEO or website. Um, uh, 
personally, I don't. I use the manual methods. So I use the uh, scripts. Uh, I use, sorry, I use the adverts and the leaflets and, and um, dominating the ground, as I call it, um, rather than uh, Google and, and websites and stuff. If you have a pitch that uh, in week three, then of course you self-evaluate at the end of it. And I use what's called a pitch in miss form. Um, so I'd go through what what I've said. I'd write it down. Um, keep it in the client file because it's going to get followed later anyway. Um, and just uh, put down honestly, and I do it in the car after I come out of the call, um, because when it's, it's fresh in my mind, why I didn't get the deal and what could I do better next time. And that, well, that does it. It helps you monitor yourself for when you go into your next call, um, you know, the following day or the following week or whenever it, does, whenever it happens. So all of that, um, it sounds like a lot, but it's actually once you get into it, it's actually quite easy. It doesn't take up too much time, and it, it's, it, it's simple stuff. It's not um, uh, complicated stuff. So what if, that's my um, that's my three-week plan. On the fourth week, I'm actually closing deals and doing paperwork and um, um, getting them nailed down and stuff and signing them up and then instructing solicitors and stuff. So, so that's that's a plan. And if you don't have a plan, what I do is um, put one together or use mine. I'm not precious about it. By all means, uh, use my plan. Okay, right. Let's move on to the first step which is uh, advertising. Sorry, John, we're going to say something there. I was going to say that's a cracking plan, really. I mean, it's just, you know, just that one slide is, I mean, in my opinion, it's just powerful. I mean, a lot of people, you know, it just keeps people on a very focused track, doesn't it? I think you've got all the elements in there, and um, and obviously it's something that works for you. It's a system that works. So, you know, unless someone's got something better, I mean, that's a great uh, template to run with, really, for, you know, yeah, for, yeah. for people to take away on the night tonight. Yeah, they can do it. Um, it's <clears throat> just a good plan. It works in any patch. You know, I think it works in any patch. Well, it does for me anyway. So, so let's go on to um, the next step, which which is advertising. And I'll, I just want to show you a photograph to start with. So, just a couple of seconds and have a look at this photograph. Now, this was a photo I took in on a recent trip to Zambia, and what I'd like to ask is, where did you look on the photograph first? And hopefully, there's a bit of science behind this, you looked at the sun. And then the second place you looked might have been top left. And that's because we read from left to right in Europe. So it's not because you didn't look at the sun first because it was interesting, because it's just a blob. It's actually because it's the brightest part of the picture. And we tend to, as photographers, we tend to look at, uh, or as viewers of photographs, we tend to look at the brightest part of any picture first, and then we go top left and see what's interesting. And that is exactly the same as advertising, whether it's leaflets or newspaper ads or billboards. Um, the brightest part is what protects your advert from the rest of the noise around the advert. Um, and let's say it's in the middle of a newspaper, um, there's lots of noise in the adverts and um, Articles and features and photographs around your advert, um, obviously unless you put a full page one in. So on our adverts, I'm going to show you a, a, a few examples. The brightest part of the advert is in the middle, so it protects the advert from the rest of the noise around it. Um, we use the uh, Ada model, which is attention, interest, desire, and action. So the top part, an offer on your property in 48 hours. That's the attention because we've gone from the middle of the advert, we're first seeing it, then we go top left. So offer on your property in 48 hours. Uh, the interest is uh, purchase agreed within seven days, completion on date to suit, solutions to suit, clear your debt, to make a free start, all that type of thing um, is the interest. The des build some desire then, it's a local company, it's a free valuation, free legals, free advice, everything's free and all circumstances considered. Now that's the building a little bit of desire. And then the last bit, a call to action, phone this number. And you'll look there, this is a Northampton number. And though if, if this advert was out in Northampton, everyone knows the code, 01604. And the last part of the number, um, sometimes called the gold number or silver number, um, is 506060. If they see that in the newspaper, all they've got to remember is 506060, because they all know the code anyway. So it's a really simple, um, simple number to remember. And, uh, we follow that rule. Of course, you can put pretty pictures in. 
uh, and make your advert look um, interesting and, and sexy and fun and stuff. Um, but the basic premise or template of an advert um, is bright in the middle, protected from the surrounding noise. And I'll show you a couple of others because we split test adverts all the time. So uh, this is for a black and white uh, newspaper or a black and white classified section in, in a newspaper. And we might split the test with I'm tired of paying your mortgage, which is a slightly different um, advert. We might say, uh, want to sell your house quickly and then change the colour. We'd only do one split test with either change the colour or change the title. I'm just trying to show you a few um, different uh, examples here. What we've learned this actually recently is that if we put the word repossession too high in the advert, um, it halves our call rate. And the reason is because um, some people don't actually realise that they're in a repossession procedure. Um, so it, it's a mistake we've made. We've had adverts out like this. The, the word reposition is too high in the advert and too big. So learn from my mistake, just take it down um, and put it somewhere else in the, uh, in the advert, not in the, the title. You saw the home fast. A big yellow one. So all, all of these we can split test. It. If you see in the top right hand corner there, we put the code letters in there so we know which uh, that's out for our use. So we know which area they're going in and what week they're going in. We can put those little codes in there. Um, if I'm perfectly honest, the, um, if we ask what colour advert that was sent out or what colour advert did they see or did the vendor see, quite often they don't know or they can't remember. So it's a, it's a, the science behind it, but you can only make your own numbers up. And, and some people do ask me, what's the best advert can you put out? What's giving you the most responses? Well, that's quite hard to, um, to measure because it's all based on uh, the rate of delivery, uh, the type of delivery. Um, whether you've got solar drops or multi drops, the type of deliverers that you're using. There's all these things that go into it. And only you can decide your numbers. And if you split test in an area, and split testing just means changing one thing on your advert. So let's just go back a second. So we're changing colours here. If this particular one, this, this orange and yellow advert, gets more calls than the grey advert, then use more of the, the, the yellow. But you've got your own KPIs or key point indicators um, to measure yourself on, on your advert uh, on your advertising in your own patch. So I'd advise not taking any um, numbers for anyone else, just do it yourself and measure yourself and you'll you'll become an expert in this um, as you go along. So, so next thing in legals. Well, the only thing I was gonna say, is there any sort of ratios you work to uh, per thousand sorry. delivered? Did you hear Yeah that we right? certainly do yeah. Yes, yeah certainly there's what we do um, in an area is, let's say uh, an area is 4,000 houses, which is our kind of North Warwickshire patch. We'd have to deliver 1,000 leaflets into um, 1,000 of the, the kind of the top left, if you look on the map, top left for week one, and top right week two, and bottom right week three, and then bottom left week four, and we'd carry them going 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, and rotating around the patch. There's another trick we do as well. There's um, a, a thing called bin sticks, and I'll go just go back to leaflets a second. If we get the, these types of leaflets um, made in vinyl, and uh, we use weatherproof ink, it's not waterproof ink; it's actually weatherproof because um, ink fades in the sun as well as um, you know. If it, well, there's a problem with ink fading as well as getting wet and running off. So we use weatherproof ink and sticky leaflets, and then when a deliverer or a delivering team is in week three, there's another deliverer or another leafleter in week one. And what they're doing is following the bin man round. And the reason we do that is because if we stick a sticky leaflet on someone's bin, one, they never complain, and two, it lasts longer because it can't go in the bin. And so it's um, even, even if someone rips it off and puts it in the bin, the next week when he pulls his bin out to get emptied, the whole street still got the, the leaflets on the on their bin, so it, it's a, a not really a branding thing. It's just to keep the leaflet in the patch as long as possible, and because leaflets have got a notorious for having the fastest route from the front door to the bin. Um, but in, if you stick them on the uh, outside, one you don't get complaints, as I said, and two it sticks there for longer. Um, and if the, if someone does get motivated to sell, 
they know exactly where to go to get the number um, so it sticks there for them so okay legals now it's incredibly important to um, have the right forms and you could pay a lawyer loads of money for all the right forms but in reality in the house you just need to secure the deal emotionally and move the vendor from um, I want to sell my property to uh, a mind state that says I've sold my property that doesn't need to be done with a load of complicated legal paperwork at this stage because it's an emotional state of mind not a legal contract and we make money by doing deals not by uh, suing people that drop out of deals or you know, suing vendors or anything <clears throat> so the, the paperwork you do in the house can be simple as an option agreement that's not to be confused with a, uh, a lease option that's a totally different thing an option agreement just gives you um, an amount of time and an agreed amount or deal that you're doing with the uh, with the vendor or with the property or with the deal. So a lockout so this, agreement. Uh, particular piece of paper houses are two. Uh, I'm just going to come on to that. In fact, I'll come to this next slide. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's all right. Um, the, uh, we're going to that third point. The, the vendor's paperwork is either called an option, it's either called a lockout, and sometimes it's called a heads of terms. It, it, if I if I'm on a patch, these three pieces of paper are all exactly the same thing. And the first thing is that it, I call it an option agreement because an option agreement with a vendor is a softer option. It's a softer um, word to say. Lockout agreements are normally used with business to business relationships or with um, uh, developers and, and, and marketers of, of multiple units. If you say the word lockout to a um, to a vendor, that's a scary word. And it's a, it's a quite a harsh word, so I use yeah. option. It's a good idea. So let's let's say we've let, well let's say we've used the word option agreement with the vendor, and it's an option on the property. Once that piece of paper leaves the house and gets posted or emailed to the solicitor, it actually becomes the heads of terms. So they're, they're, they're not actually two different pieces of paper; they're the same piece of paper. They just call something different. As long as your legal team know what you're doing, so the option agreement. Um, two-page uh, contract, emotional contract, if you like, um, actually becomes a heads of terms when it reaches the solicitor. Um, so they're not two separate um, things necessarily. And heads of terms can be written on a, just a, a piece of paper. It's just a, an instruction to a solicitor, so it doesn't have to be a separate thing at all. But that causes just cause some confusion because quite a few people email me and say, can, can you send me a heads of terms? I need a heads of terms for the solicitor. And you absolutely don't need one. You just need your option to be able to sign with the vendor anyway. So I hope that's cleared that up. Um, on your option agreement it should be assignable because um, assignable just means that you can um, and it's one word on the, on the thing this contract is assignable that means you can trade it to somebody else so you can trade the contract you've just agreed with the vendor to uh, to another party or another investor because it, at this point um, when you're in the house you might know that, that you want the deal and keep it and that's fine but if you want to trade it or you're deciding when you get there that you want to trade it um, then you can do if, if, if your option agreement is assignable, then you can then you can trade it. Um, when you're selling a deal uh, to an investor, you might want them to sign a non-disclosure agreement, and um, that's to protect your deal so they don't knock on the door and not because they're going to steal the deals, because they might mess it up by speaking to the vendor uh, and scaring them, talking about investor type stuff, which vendors generally don't know uh, much about, and that's why they're in the position that they're in any in the first place. Uh, so I, I provide all of this. It's all, um, it, you know, just it's, it's all provided um, right from the start in the patch when someone manages a patch for us. We provide all the paperwork, and it can be self-branded to see whatever business is, um, you know, operating the patch and, and doing the doing the deals. Uh, and the reason for that is because if someone's in a patch um, with the paperwork, we know what paperwork they've signed up with the vendor, how they've uh, what they've said to the vendor, what they've agreed, then. Uh, if someone hasn't got an email list of investors like we have, then they can send the deal to us and we'll sell it for them so that we can trade the deal for them and we can JV together uh, to sell deals. So that's the legals. Personally, I wouldn't worry too much about the legals because um, and I'm using an analogy that someone used for me a, a few a few weeks ago, was that we all switch on the light and when we use the switch on the wall, the electric goes to the light and the light comes on. And I doubt many people could explain about how the atoms and the protons and all the neutrons work together to provide the electricity that switches on the light 
I, I couldn't explain that, I doubt many people could, but we still switch on the light. Uh, so we don't have to understand everything that works in uh, an option contract uh, or a lease option contract, for example. It's quite a complicated old beast um, consisting of three different things, a power of attorney and a, uh, a management agreement uh, and an AST running concurrently. But we don't have to understand that all about them as long as we've got an option and uh, as a heads of terms for our solicitor to do all the legal work to get the deal done. And so we do the, the simple bit in the house and then let the lawyers do the, um, the complicated bits. Okay. So why, why would you sell deals on? And uh, as I said right at the beginning, <clears throat> this isn't um, a standalone strategy. This is a, a thing that everybody should be doing if you're building a portfolio or building your, your business or building a, a, an area. It's because some of them, sometimes we get referrals out of area. I've got a um, car signed up with I buy, um, I can't remember what it says now, I buy houses, uh, any area, any price, any condition. And then it's got a number, but um, if I drive, I'm driving up to Scotland on uh, Saturday, and I might get a call from um, somewhere on the motorway or you know, somewhere from another area, I might not want to keep that deal, but I might trade it on. So your advertising can reach outside of your area, and you'll get leads from um, from places that you didn't expect. So, so that's what you might sell a deal on because it's outside of your area. Um, if you decide, um, like I do, I, I buy two bed terraces and three bed terraces, and um, so apartments don't do it for me at all, especially the new build stuff, that doesn't really do it for me. But if I come across something that's a new build or apartments or uh, big grand houses, I, I might still do a deal, but I might not keep the deal, I might trade that on because it doesn't fit into my portfolio. Um, so that's some of the reason for selling a deal on. Um, uh, selling deals on increases your income and your cash flow quite a lot because, as I said earlier, if you if you're building a portfolio or in the mindset to build a portfolio, at some point you will run out of money. Um, it doesn't matter how much you've got, at some point you will run out. Uh, so it helps raise deposits quicker uh, if you're trading deals because you can charge between 3,000 and 10,000 per deal depending on the location. Plus you, if, if, the deal, if you've done a grand job um, getting the price down in your negotiation with the vendor, you can charge that bit in the middle as well to make the deal um, even sweeter. Um, so it helps you raise deposits quicker so you can buy more property. Um, another reason is if you couldn't secure the deal for some reason, uh, you could, because you didn't have the tools in your toolbox or there wasn't a, a deal, you didn't think there was a deal quite there, you can sell the, uh, sell the lead to somebody else who might have more experience or uh, might be better at it or um, has a different strategy that, that they use than that you might not. Um, and the next reason is building a business and it's building a brand and, and there's a lot of people in the industry know what I do. And quite often it will email, have you got any stock mark, have you got any products, I need something in this area, or I need something in that area, and we can pass deals on um, because of the marketing that I do around it inside the business. So um, it helps you secure more deals, and it builds and extends your brand. The most important reason though is cash flow, um, because if, you, if you're if you running out of deposits, you get stuck. Um, and that particularly um, is relevant with flips and assisted sales and stuff. Oh, assisted sales, not, not so much, but with flips. Um, and refurbs, um, your money can get stuck in the refurb while the property's on the market um, for sale. So um, everyone I think should sell deals on um, in their area. Please don't throw leads in the bin um, because they're all, they're all worth something. Okay, uh, shall we move on a couple of processes? Let's get into some, uh, let's get into some nitty gritty. There's, uh, first of all, we've got a lead, and the first call from the lead is to get the basic info out of the lead. Now, I use a, a virtual PA to do that, um, because I don't want to get into the into the haggle, into the numbers at this point. So, the first call is to get the basic info, and the basic info is, uh, what's your name, what's your address, uh, what's uh, an email address if they want to, and a telephone number, there's personal details. I then want to know how many bedrooms it is uh, that the property's got. I want to know uh, roughly what age the property is and uh, an approximate valuation. And I actually want a justification for the valuation. So was it from an estate agent? Uh, has it been on the market before? Or was it uh, a value, of, uh, is it a, a chain break? So a value has been active value, so we've got an accurate valuation. Um, so what's the justification on the value? Uh, what's the outstanding amount uh, on the mortgage? And some people will say that on first call, some people won't. 
Um, and the next thing I need is what's the motivation to sell? So why are uh, why does the vendor want to sell the property? And this can be vital uh, information because there's three or four, uh, maybe five reasons for being motivated. One, uh, divorce, uh, probate, um, a death in the family, the financial trouble, um, migration. It could be any, and it, that will dictate how a, how I um, uh, do the deal at a later stage. So I'd like that write um, right out, see if they're a motivated seller. When I've got that information, then I can value the property. Um, I use various websites to value properties. Uh, Zoopla. Uh, I go into Rightmove to see what's on, uh, you know, see what's the, uh, the ceiling price on the on the uh, on the street, uh, and see what's available on that street further down the street or something of a similar kind. I'll use Mouse Price, and uh, Mouse Price has got a brilliant back end. It's um, called Calnea, C A L N E A, and on the back of that you can get a, a 21 page report. Um, I think it costs 20 pounds we have to pay for that one, um, but it does give a, a lovely bit of research when you're valuing properties. It's a, a, a great tool that one, and of course Property Snake and Property B are other websites that you can go to to get the um, to get more information on the on the valuation to get it more accurate. And of course there's the big one which is Home Track, um, but that costs, and I, I don't like to spend money when I'm doing this sort of thing, so I do most of my research online on um, as free as possible anyway. So once I've got got a value. And I've just been out to a vendor today in Redford, it's about 100 miles from me, but it was a lead that uh, I said I'd go and do. Uh, the chap in Redford, he's got a three bed uh, uh, semi detached house. It's, it's actually more just 58, and he said it was worth 140. I thought this is a great one for a BMV offer. Um, so I went to see him today. Having done my research in the meantime, I called him a couple of days ago. Having done my research, <coughs> oh, excuse me, I sneezed then. Um, I've done my research. Um, all my websites are telling me that that property is actually worth about 112 to 114. So I've still got a BMV deal because it's um, it's outside more than 58, um, but it's not quite as good as he he thinks it is. So I've got to when I get into the meeting, I've got to get that price down or that expectation of price from 140 down to 112. Um, and I take my comparables with me. So I, today I think I took uh, a Zoopla um, printout and I took a uh, match price printout. With the 112 um, valuation on there, and because it's got pretty pictures on it, it's got 112 in big bold letters. Uh, that kind of does the job for me. So we we'll value the property. Next thing is to is to get some rapport with the uh, uh, the vendor um, and get as much info out of them as possible. And what we want to know, of course, is the mortgage, any outstanding loans, reasons for selling, the condition of the property. And it's quite surprising when you get into um, talking to vendors how much they'll tell you on the phone. When it's about their property, um, you don't have to go through everything. You don't have to make any offers on here. Um, I actually go and visit them uh, to do a lot of this now. So I make an initial appointment uh, to go and see them, and then do all of uh, a lot of this on the uh, on, on the visit, not on the uh, phone. But that's some basic info, and, and I'll gauge how motivated they are to get out of their property. And when I was talking to the chap that went to see today, Michael, um, he he said he wanted to get out of the property because um, people were chasing him for money. Um, he hadn't been very good with money, and they were, uh, he was getting letters through the door and phone calls at work and this type of thing. Um, so I made an appointment to go and see him today, and it turns out that his outstanding mortgage is 58, so it sounded like a fantastic uh, BMV offer. But um, he had a massive second charge with a subprime lender, um, in which he put a new conservator on the back of the house and redid the windows um, in the property a few years ago. So he's got this massive second charge that he forgot to tell me about. Um, now, luckily, you can you can avert that because you can pull the title deeds down from the land registry. For um, sometimes it's three pounds and sometimes it's four pounds. I think today it was three pounds. Um, but once you've got the title documents from the land registry, it will tell you all the charges um, that that uh, are attached to the property. And um, so I already knew this before I went to see him. Um, so when we got there, I knew I was had a um, a bit of a battle on my hands to get the, the price down and then then get all these charges um, included in the deal as well so we can pay everybody off and, and still make it make it a deal. So then we'd, um, when we've done all that and got all the information out of, um, out of the vendor, we then make an offer. In my case, it's either a BMV offer um, or if there's no equity or, or there's, you know, there's no commercial value in, in uh, a BMV offer, then we'd offer a lease option 
and the easiest way to offer a lease option is to say, look, um, your property is valued at um, about 112. The amount you owe is about 108. Um, there isn't there isn't a deal to ha to be had here. This is um, there's no money in the property at all. And you'll, even if you put it on at 112, you'll take an offer of 18 anyway. That people do because they don't pay estate agent window prices of property. It's just been the nature to haggle a little bit. So <clears throat> although there's no commercial value in the deal and no point making a below market value offer. How about if I babysit your mortgage for a period of time in years until the market recovers and there is some equity in the property? And that's the simplest way I've found of describing how a lease option works. It's how about I babysit the mortgage for an, a period of time in years until there is some equity in the property. And it's and most people get that. Um, if I get any more complicated than that, I'll explain how this option works. Um, and I used to, when I first started doing lease options, I would say things like, "It's um, it's all very legal, and the solicitors involved, and it's and it's and it's all in, all the paperwork, it's all, it's all a contract, and the paperwork, and it's, it's all put together." I'd get objection after objection after objection, and then the, the the vendor would want to include their lawyer, and then of course their lawyer doesn't know what a lease option is because he's a family lawyer. So the deal would fall to pieces. Now I keep it incredibly simple and say, look, how about I babysit your mortgage for a period of time until the market recovers and there is some equity in the property that we can use? That works virtually every time. So let's say we've either offered a below market value offer or we've offered a lease option deal or a babysit deal. We close up the deal and we'd either keep it um, or we'd sell the deal on then because we've got a signed contract, uh, emotional contract uh, contract with the vendor, um, so we can sell it or, or, or keep the thing. And that's a process that, uh, that that works. It's a process that we do with every single lead, um, uh, and it works. So let's say, uh, let's move on to another process that's in the business. Let's say we want to sell the deal, which is right at the bottom of this process. So we're going to sell the deal. So usually, We've got to prepare the deal for market. Um, now we're either going to flip the deal uh, to an assisted sale, which is an option. Um, we might have to do some improvement on the property, put a bathroom in, put a kitchen in, do, do a, a tidy up or a spruce up, and then put it on the market and take the profit out of the deal once it's um, marketable, or to uh, what's called an info pack, um, which is what I do. It's a my info pack is an eight-page brochure. The first page is. Uh, the headline of the deal, it, um, it's, it's, it's uh, a deal because it's below market value of, let's say, 25%. It cash flows by, let's say, £250 uh, as a gross, a gross cash flow. And um, a picture of the property on the front and uh, the location. And that's all we put on the first page. The second page, then we go into some description of the property and uh, what the property is like, where it is, uh, the condition of it, uh, some photographs in there. Um, of the interior, normally would take the kitchen, bathroom, one exterior, one bedroom, and a living room maybe. And a particularly attractive feature, say it might have an excellent garden, uh, so it might have a, a fantastic conservatory, it might have a fantastic, uh, uh, one of the bedrooms might be excellent or something. So we'd take um, the pictures that are relevant to uh, making it a deal. We'd put uh, another page with comparables on there that that for sale in the area, and for the comparables, we just take them off right move um, because an, an investor that's going to buy uh, our deal will is perfectly capable of doing his own research anyway. Um, but we want to make sure he knows that we've done some uh, sort of research into the area and we know the area. Then we'd put uh, some rental comparables uh, to justify our cash flow uh, to make sure that other properties in the area are renting uh, for what we're selling, uh, telling the new investor in our, in our info pack. Um, uh, that, you know, the stands up and backs up our argument of why this is a deal. Uh, some investors will um, buy out of area. Like in it, we used to call them armchair investors uh, because they can get out of their armchair to um, to buy a deal. And armchair investors will quite often buy out of area. So as the most uh, as much information as possible goes into info pack to allow a new investor to make a decision based on uh, internet research, uh, local. On the ground knowledge um, and your info pack and your information that you put together. So once we've done that, 
we put out to it's on the market it's out to, uh, put out to either an estate agent to sell it if you're doing a flip to an investor if we're uh, maybe going to invest in meets or you know networking meetings and stuff I don't know uh, John at the books has a stand up and present your deal um, at his meeting and quite a few meetings around the country that I've been to have uh, if you're a supplier pitch your your product for 20 seconds and that's all you need to um, pitch out what I've got I've got a three bed house in North Warwickshire it's a terraced house it's at 25 cent below market value it cash flows at 275 pounds a month gross and it's in um, eight out of ten condition uh, for, for the type of house it is come and see me at the, at the end of the meeting if you're interested and I'll, I'll post you out an info pack or email you an info pack and um, so that's if you're selling to an investor at a meeting if you've built up a list we might send it out to your list and um, our list is about 24,000 uh, investors um, they don't all buy every month but they, they regularly buy our deals and we get an email every Tuesday morning with one or two or three deals on there um, that are available that week and we'll get we'll sell the deal between Wednesday and Friday um, and also the last bit on, on this particular process is agents um, we've got quite a few agents around the country that will take deals uh, and they'll put their own mark up on there and they'll make their own money but um, the deal goes out straight uh, from me um, to the agents and, and they pay themselves commission if they, if they sell the deal for us as well so that, there's a kind of four routes um, to market the deals out to uh, they're all as good as each other I presume that the one I use the most is the, is the list than the agents um, just because they they seem to be the quickest um, to sell deals um, you know for me but there might not be for you estate agents on the ground it might be the, the quickest route for you or if you do flips or assisted sales and you would go to a state agent to flip your own deals so that's a, another process in the business that's selling uh, selling the deal on and of course when it completes uh, then we'll get paid um, you know which uh, is cash flow so let's go back to in the house for a second and I've got this model which is uh, our stage process of a vendor visit um, and I don't want to get, get too complicated but I thought I'd show you it because it's what we uh, uh, what we go for uh, when we're in the house and this is a my league closing template I wrote it a few years ago um, and it works um, it, it, it gets deals and if, if you remember this in the right order and, and you practice this along it takes a bit of practice to learn okay. it um, we got practice us. this the only thing I was going to say, Mark, I know obviously you've done a great pre-meet at the um, Berkshire uh, this Monday, but I don't know whether it's worth just sharing the time you when you book an appointment with someone. That's, I think that's a really neat little thing. Yeah, All the time. <laughs> yeah, the time, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, I decided um, uh, very early on in my kind of property career, I decided that uh, I would make appointments with vendors. And quite often a vendor on the, on the telephone you know the, you've got the details from your virtual PA or you've taken the details of, uh, so you've got the condition of the house you've got how many bedrooms you've got what type of property it is and the vendor might say come around straight away come around and see me I want to do the deal and I would drop everything and I would go and visit my vendor and I, I figured out fairly quickly um, that my vendors were running my diary for me and I ended up dropping everything to to go out and suit the vendor, which was which is kind of the, the tail wagging the dog in effect. And so what I decided was I'll do two appointments, usually on an evening, because you can catch both vendors in, or you know, a husband and wife in, or a family and stuff. So I do my vendor appointments on an evening, and I chose a, a particular time. I, I don't work Fridays, and I don't work Saturdays, um, mainly because um, uh, nobody wants to work on a Friday and, and Saturday is X Factor night so nobody can work on a Saturday I don't think so I do my appointments Monday to Thursday and I do one on a Sunday morning um, the, the, the time of my appointment is 20 past 6 and 20 past 8 and the reason for that is is at 20 past 6 or if I made the appointment at, um, on the hour the impression in the mind of the vendor of the length of the meeting is an hour and nobody wants to uh, subject themselves to an hour sitting with somebody um, about the property. So if you make the appointment on the half hour, the impression of the length of the meeting in the mind of the vendor is half an hour. And everyone, we're all busy people, half an hour is a long time. So I make my 20 past the hour, and then if the vendor asks how, how long is the meeting, well, it's 10 minutes unless you've got any questions. Because you will get a question during the meeting. Um, and you could get through the whole meeting in 10 minutes 
if they didn't ask any questions. So um, 20 past 6 is a great time to make a, an appointment. And then my second meeting, if I'm doing two on the evening, um, 20 past 8 um, on, a, on an evening. And I do another appointment on a Sunday morning at 20 past 11. And the, again, 20 past still works, still applies, a 10 minute meeting unless you've got any questions. But the 20 past 11 on a Sunday morning is because everyone sleeps in their own bed on a Sunday night, uh, Saturday night, so you can catch everyone in. And, and if you're in the house on a, on a Sunday morning, you could stay in the house as long as it takes to get the deal. Because if someone's expecting someone, uh, if a vendor's expecting someone to come around and talk about talk about their house on a Sunday morning, they generally haven't made any other plans, so they can see you and you can spend as long as you like. Um, quite often, I've spent two or three hours in a house on a Sunday um, and been offered a you know Sunday lunch. Um, what? Well, you've been here two. You've been here two and a half hours. Do you want some dinner? I say, yeah, thanks very much. That's the grand. Um, and we get lunch. We get lunch from Mr. Bill Leonard for a poor. Very good. We're now, we're now part of it. <laughs> yeah, we must have done something right. Um, so we're now part of it. We're in there helping the vendors out. And, you know, the chances are we're going to get a deal out of them. So, so that's why I do that. So Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then on a Sunday morning. Fantastic chance to make appointments. And it keeps the diary manageable as well, because you're not running across. I, I, found, I did find myself in the beginning driving past my house um, numerous times a day, running in, in between appointments. So, is it, so yeah, that, that's a it, bit of a it, nugget. There's also the concept that people like to deal with busy people, isn't it? So if you sort of block out your diary into those zones, when you sort of say, well, like the first appointment I can give you is, or the first meeting I can give you is, and you're, you know, you're sort of two or three or four days ahead, then it just, sat, I think it always comes across better than I can pop around any time sort of thing. Absolutely, yeah, it does, yeah. I, I can, I, I'm just, I'm flying past your place at about, uh, I can fit in about 20 past six, would that be all right? Um, just sounds a lot better than, um, yeah, I'll drop everything now and come around and see you. Yeah, yeah, sounds right. So let's, let's get in the house. So we're getting the house, um, I, those who have seen me talk before, uh, they'll know that I head for the living room, and I'm going to sit in a single chair, hopefully husband and wife or mum and dad will sit on the sofa, and we'll sit there together, so I've got them both, rather than me sat in the middle of the sofa, and then you know, one on either side of me, so I'm playing tennis with my head all night, so I'll try to sit in a single chair, um, quite often I call it dad's chair, because it's the kind of biggest one, the closest one in the room to, to get to, um, so I sit in a single chair, and uh, I keep my briefcase closed at that point. I don't take notes because I'll, I'll the vendor to open up a little bit because um, what to introduce the meeting uh, by saying I use the same sentence every time virtually. Um, at this point, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, I've no idea if we can do any business. Um, so do you mind if I ask you a few questions about your situation, circumstances and property um, first? And nobody ever says no. They always say, yeah, sure, yeah, fire away. Now, because I've asked permission to ask the questions, and on, on my model, this is in my intro section, so that's the top blue bit, um, this is my intro section. Um, if they say yes, I can ask as many questions as I like, and I've got, um, me, and my, me and a few buddies got together around a table in a cafe, and we banged out 75 questions we can ask a vendor about their situation, uh, circumstances or property, um, before we do a deal. Now we don't have to ask them all and not scripted because uh, if they're scripted it becomes across you know it comes across as scripted um, and, and people see through scripts all the time, you know, can scripts. So it's just a conversation, it's very, very light, um, it's general questions, and if you get taken off down an avenue uh, with your questioning and you run with the uh, you know you run with the, um, the, uh, the, the the questions and the answers because um, that can often lead you to to somewhere new that you didn't know you were going, but you, it can reveal information that you could use later on. So you let them run away with it, and it, sometimes it takes a, a long time, sometimes it's really quick. Um, but eventually, once you've got through all your questions, you can decide whether it's a deal for you. And th this is the part that a lot of people, when they're starting out, seem to get um, a bit backwards, because they're dying to, sh to share their knowledge about property investing and about how the market works. and they're dying to share, share the knowledge that they can do a lease option and look at their property forever um, and it won't cost them anything. And that's kind of getting the getting the meat backwards because um, it's not about our product, it's um, the meeting's actually about finding out what the vendor wants and what they need or what they think they need and what they think their problems are. Um, and once you, 
if you dig into people and I call it getting into someone's ribs, if you get into their ribs during the fact find, um, you'll get more out of it and it will stop the objections coming later on because I mean, everyone in a vendor visit will face objections um, to not closing a deal. Um, but if you get into the ribs properly um, and do the fact find and ask the right questions and ask them in the right order, then you, there's more chance of you getting a deal. Um, and you're building rapport. A, a lot of books that I've read say, oh, we should build rapport by having something in common and seeing a picture on a wall and all the sort of, this is all American stuff from the, from the 90s. Um, professional rapport building is asking the right questions and active listening. It's being interested in what the vendor's saying and then responding to the to the question. So uh, today's meet went today's meet went quite well in uh, Retford. Um, chaps, uh, look, I'm an, I'm an old soldier, so um, the chap was uh, he did 22 years. He was in the, um, the what's called the RLC, the logistic core, um, and I was in a, a, a compatible type unit. I was an engineer, and so we chatted about that. And, when I went up to use the, the, the loo, all his photographs were of um, army sergeant's mess pictures and um, because he was a sergeant when he left the army, uh, and so was I. So that's a, a, a wonderful rapport builder so we can talk about um, places he's been, his son is a, a mechanic in the army or an engineer in the army and I was too and he's going to Canada, Canada next, uh, next year to do a three month tour and I spent two and a half years in Canada, I lived there for two and a half years. Uh, so there's this, these things that you can chat about to build rapport are just questions that you ask um, uh, right at the beginning, but they can lead you down an avenue that you know you never thought to, you, you wouldn't have thought could happen. And on the phone, it doesn't happen. And I'm, I'm not saying you can't do deals on the phone because uh, people do, but the the, the fallover rate um, on on phone deals is is about three times as much. Um, you know, it's about treble. Um, the follower rate of deals in the house because um, you can you can't build that same type of rapport um, when you're in a house as uh, on the phone as when you're in a house. So um, that's how we do it in the house. So the fact finds that um, completely vital. It's where most most people get it um, get the deal wrong. So I spend a lot of time on fact find. It's quite detailed, and I use my seventy five questions. And I take them in there, so it's not a script. It's um, um, I just read them off sometimes when I'm losing my place. That's completely vital. Uh, then critical time in our model is where you decide whether you want the deal or not. Um, and if you do want the deal, then you, then you move on. If you don't want the deal, then you make your excuses and you, you know, you get out. If, you, if it's not tradable, you can get out. So let me move on to match, which is uh, match uh, matching our product uh, that we've got that we've got in our briefcase. So it might be a lease option deal. It might be a below market value offer, and that's what we'd uh, we'd use one of the two uh, to offer to to suit the needs of the vendor. We pre-close it. Pre-close is quite easy. If we can do this deal, can we? Can, if I can do what you want, will you sign up? And and so if that's a pre-close. Not really any pressure in there. Cause it's, if I could, would you? Um, if the response is negative, then go back to ask some more questions. If it's positive, move on to a close, which is a simple. Um, here's my contract. Here's my pen. Can I have a signature, please? And there's, there's no tricks about it. There's no uh, convoluted ways of doing it. Just here's my pen and paper. Can I have six signature, please? And that's the deal done. Um, we deal with objections. Um, hopefully, you won't get any objections, but in real life, we do. The biggest objection that we sometimes uh, come across is I want to think about it. And there's lots of ways of getting around. I want to think about it. And there's lots of books written about getting around that particular objection. But in reality, if we get the objection, I want to think about it, we haven't done enough rapport building in the first place. And uh, th there is no better solution to objections than doing fact finding properly. Um, th th there's lots of, I mean, read any sales book in W.S. Smith or Waterstones or any bookstore and the, the, there's books and chapters and chapters written on objections but in reality if you get, I want to think about it, the actual, uh, they're the words but the meaning is um, get out of my house, you haven't got a deal really. Uh, Presumably that's because they, you've not answered, you've not got to the real burning issue with them so you've not solved the problem yeah. would you say Mark? Exactly right, yeah, and, and you only do that by asking what they are. What you know, if, if you want a better gut feel, yeah. you ask more questions. Yeah, absolutely right. So that's kind of uh, how to do a vendor visit. And I, I carry this little card. I've got this is a business card size thing. Well, it's full screen for you uh, for, on the computer, but a business card thing in the house. I'm actually doing a day tomorrow. I think we're seeing three vendors tomorrow. Um, so we take this in the house. We do the prep and plan before we go. 
So we, we know the prices, we know the values, we've got the comparables, we've got the rental comparables, we've got everything, all the information we've got the title documents in the registry. We've got all the stuff we need to do the deal. Um, we do an intro and we get in, we signpost the meeting, so we tell them what we're going to do, how long it's going to last, where we're going to be, what sort of questions we're going to do, we ask permission to ask the questions, then we do the questions and fact finding, and that's all built in rapport building, because you're actively listening to what the, the problems are. Then we start to match up um, the deal with something, you know, a product we've got uh, in our briefcase, pre-close it, close it, you can use a test close, on, and that's the purple bit on the left hand side there, you can use a test close at any point past critical time. And test closing is, so what do you think of a sofa? Or, or are you with me? What we're doing is testing the temperature of the water and seeing if they're still with you, um, and seeing if they're going to come along um, down your your timeline to your deal. So then we close it up. Um, objections we can handle. We can go through objections. We could talk about objections forever, to be fair, because there's millions of different objections. We haven't really got time tonight to do them all. Um, but consolidation is the last thing on the deal. And consolidating is... Um, a, a way of keeping the deal in bed after you've left the house. And it's so often that if you leave the house and the vendor goes to the pub, they might meet their mate Fred. And their mate Fred, I'm afraid to say, is never positive about what they've just done. He's all, you know, he sucks the air through his teeth and he'll go, oh, he didn't want to do that. Oh, you didn't want to do that, you should have done this. And what happens after they come back from the pub is they have a chat amongst themselves and the following day you can't get them on the phone, they won't answer the texts, they won't answer their emails, contracts might go out if you've got that far and they won't get returned. Now, the actual deal fell over in the, in the house but you didn't get to know about it until they wouldn't answer the telephone and it could have been dealt with so easily. Um, all consolidation is and the retailers have been doing this for years because if you go to buy a, a reasonably expensive product um, from a store, you take the product, you go to the tip, the counter, you pay the bill, and that's when the the euphoria of shopping that's when it ends when you pay the bill. Now, tills are put near doors, exit doors, in shops to get you out after the remorse starts to set in, and it's called bad remorse. And what happens is they, they give you two receipts, and they make a bit of a, a, a play. It's, it's, it's almost like a, um, a, a play about giving you these two receipts. Why, why we need two receipts, I have no idea. But they, it takes a little bit of time to get the card in, then they give you a receipt, and then, then they pop the thing in a bag, then they give you the bag, and then they wish you a nice day, and then get you out of the door. And it's this preparation, it's this baby steps to get you out of the out of the store because once you're out of the store you change the mindset from I'm shopping to I bought and that's exactly the same as in a house with a vendor is what we do is we close the deal we put the paperwork in our briefcase it's all settled the deal's done we've got the paperwork um, completed and signed it's packed away we don't leave then <coughs> we consolidate the deal so and consolidating is this is taking the vendor through the baby steps of what's going to happen next and up until completion. So the next step might be a valuer visiting the property. You might accompany the valuer um, if you can, um, or you just tell them what the valuer does. He walks around, looks in all the rooms, checks all the bits and pieces, and then disappears, takes about half an hour. The next step after the valuer's been in is you uh, get sent an exchange contract or release option deal, depending on what type of deal you're doing but you get sent some paperwork. The paperwork is pretty chunky. And if you're dealing with somebody in the early 20s, um, or in late 20s, in fact, it might be the first time they've ever sold a house. So when I was in my early 20s, if I had a lease option contract to come through the post, uh, you know, through the land on the doormat, I'd be pretty scared, because they are quite chunky contracts. So the thing is to preempt that and show them one. So carry the contract with you. Um, have a real exchange contract from a previous deal or um, pay a lawyer 60 quid and it'll give you a, an exchange contract or a lease option deal or whatever and have it with you on the lawyer's paperwork so they've seen it, they, they can touch it and feel it and they know what one looks like and they don't get scared. If you, if you, if you, I, I, what I do, I've got it with me today, but I, 
and I've got one with um, those little post-it notes that stick out of the side where the signatures are supposed to be, and they've got little tiny arrows on them. And I show them, this is where you're expected to sign. Here are the four signatures. You've got to date it, and you've got to do this. And this is all consolidation. It's all telling them in baby steps what's going to happen next, um, and how the deal's going to go, and have rough time frames. Now, we all, we all say, and our, our adverts say that, we'll make you an offer in 48 hours, we'll make you an offer in seven days, or whatever advert we're running that week. That's an offer, not a completed sale, and you've got to cover this with the vendor. So instead of saying, we'll never complete in seven days because we can't, we've made you an offer, that's what the advert says, we say it a little bit more gently, a little, a little bit softer than that, is what day would you like to move out? And that's a lovely soft way of letting the vendor decide on a move out day. They might be moving into rental accommodation, or they might be chasing another property, and they could say, in fact, the chat today, Michael said today, um, I'd like to send a property over Christmas if that's all right, and then move out in the first week of January. That's the end of November now, so I've got until January to make this deal happen. That's fantastic for me, um, because we'll get a buyer, we'll send down the photographs, we'll make up a brochure, we'll get it out to the list next week, we'll have a buyer in place ready, we'll, tell, we'll put on the brochure that the uh, completion day will be the first week of January, so everyone's expectations are managed, um, fantastic deal for me, and it, it was soft and gentle, we didn't have to um, push or say, we'll give you the cash in 48 hours, there was no pressure on us to um, you know, to complete the deal as quick as possible, because the vendor actually said, we'll complete in January, and that's fantastic. Um, then, once the exchange contracts go back, uh, sorry, I missed a point out there, if, um, if they're a young couple, um, the vendors are, are young, what I generally do is I actually visit the house um, on the day that the exchange contracts get delivered because if I can sit with them and go through the contract with them and, and take them away with me and I'll post them, at least I know they're done. Um, and this, you can only do this, of course, if, you, if you're operating on your own patch and it's, it's convenient to go around and, you know, you, and you're, doing this, uh, uh, you're doing this within a sort of certain distance away from where it's convenient to always practical to get to. Um, but I quite often go around uh, to get them, to help them sign up the contracts and get them in the post, and then I know it's done as quickly as possible. And because they use my power team, I can uh, I keep in contact with my power team all the time, and they'll normally tell me when they're posting them out and when it's gone and when it's due to arrive. So we've kind of we've got an idea of when it's going anyway. So so it can appear then. So the next thing then is uh, completions uh, uh, quite often happen on Friday at midday. So we'll, we'll set a Friday, and that can be set by the vendor, and we'll tell them that uh, we'll all work towards that day. And um, there might be a delay of maybe a week or maybe two weeks sometimes if the searches take a long time to come through, and searches are this, this, and this. And some local authorities uh, will take two weeks to send them through, some will take three weeks. Um, I'm not sure what it's like in your area, but if it's up to three weeks, that can delay a little bit. And of course, most people understand that we can't kick lawyers uh, to move any faster. They kind of work at their own pace. Um, so just be a bit. Uh, you know, patient with the lawyers because it's a, it's a kind of process that they've got to go through. And that's consolidation. Now, when you leave the house after you've consolidated, uh, when they get in the pub and they, they meet their mate Fred, their mindset's changed from, I want to sell my house to, I've sold my house. Now, Fred, it doesn't matter how negative Fred is in the pub, um, because their mindset's completely changed, their house is now gone, it's no longer a burden, and they just say, we sold the house today, and Fred can only say, oh, fab, excellent. Um, so it calls that uh, uh, the negative negative friend in the pub and keeps your deal in bed, uh, at least for that night. And then the next stage is just keeping in touch with the vendor all the time. Some, some vendors like texts, some like emails, some like phone calls, but keep in touch with them all the way through to make sure they're all right. And, um, even making a mistake on a piece of paper is good because it gives you an excuse to phone them back just to double check some things, spellings of names, that type of thing. Um, that's all consolidation and keeping the deal in bed all the way through to completion. So, good lord. That's another process. Oh, oh that was useful. All this information. <laughs> that's quite good, isn't it? So what I do is that? It's all good stuff. Do, oh, excellent. I do one day uh, training courses, which, are, which I do one to one, I'm actually doing one tomorrow. Do you want to? I charge nine nine five for this, and I go through all of this in detail, all the processes. Um, we're doing one on the eighth of December, but instead of doing one to one, because we thought that's, um, or me and John have decided that this is a little bit expensive, nine nine five. 
it will make it a little bit cheaper. But we're doing it as a group. And so the, the, we sold a few at um, the uh, Berkshire pre meet on Monday, and we did a presentation there. And so we've got eight places, and there's 96 people on the webinar. There's eight places on the 8th of December. It's not 9 and 5, so just ignore that for a second. But this is what we're going to go through on the day. Um, I, oh, I should say that I do three or four of these a month normally. I did September, October, November, they sold out. Um, so that they are, that they are um, full of, it's a whole day. So here's what we'll go through on the day if you're interested in learning about this stuff. Um, first of all, we'll get uh, how to get the leads calling you. We'll go through the leaflets um, in, in some detail. What we've got is, um, I think there's 50 leaflets. I can show 50 example leaflets. So you can use my uh, PowerPoint template leaflets. You can have them as well if you want them. Um, but we've got 50 uh, what I call pretty leaflets. Um, and some people like pretty and pretty cells and stuff, and it, you can design your own from the pretty ones, but you've got 50 to choose from. So we'll go through boards, um, we'll go through signs and cards, and if you um, pop down to uh, Watchstones or W. Smith and grab a map of your area, and it's got to be an Ordnance Survey map, um, we'll go through your individual patch. Um, and that's why there's only eight places. I don't want too big a group because I want to give everyone the maximum value possibly can in a day is that I'll work with you to get your um, your patch up and running, as it were, and I'll show you how to how to decide where in your patch to do. And so it's all it's, it's very it's doing the nitty gritty of actually operating a patch um, on this day. We'll go through the nuts and bolts and all the mechanics. Um, you can have the scripts, you don't need to write them. You can have the um, option agreements that I use. And also what I do is, a, it's not a bonus, it's just because it makes it easier for you, is that I've already got, got a power scene in place. Um, so you can get introduced to my power team. It's not, there's no obligation, you don't have to use them, but if you haven't got one already, then you can use my power team to help you put your deals together. Do you want to um, just explain for some people quickly what a power team is, just in case someone... Um, yeah, sure, yes. With, just in case someone's not familiar with the phrase. Yeah, of course. Um, uh, a power team is consists of two, at least two lawyers, or two uh, lawyer firms, a broker, and the reason for using your own team rather than the vendor's team is that if you are doing a, let's say, a lease option deal and you've agreed it and it's all written down, it's on paper, it's stand up, fantastic. If the vendor chooses to use their family lawyer from the high street, the family lawyer, because they're not experienced in, or they might not be experienced in lease options, might argue against doing it and that will kill the deal. So what we do is we use um, our own team that are experienced in lease options or experienced in fast conveyancing and can do the, the, the deal at the time we want to do, not a regular high street lawyer, so in effect a trade lawyer. Um, and I say you're quite welcome to use my guys if you want to. Brilliant, cheers for that. So, um, we'll go through in, in the nuts and bolts of how to sell unwanted leads and deals and there's a distinct difference here because you can sell a lead um, just on the sign up, it's not particularly a deal, you can sell a lead um, of, a, of a deal that you don't want. Um, or you can do some more work and make it into a, a deal, i.e. a package deal, so you can include the power team to do the uh, convincing all the contracts for you. And I'll show you how to do that. Uh, where to find all the people to sell them to, and you're quite happy to come back to use uh, my list um, and send them back through me and we'll JB 50-50 on that. And I always say 50-50, sorry, I always say 50-50, um, because if I say that, it means I don't have to remember what I've said. Um, so everyone's, obviously mine is cost, but yeah, we'll JB 50-50 and make some money in the future as well. And are we, um, are we allowed to know how big your list is? Uh, yeah, it's uh, 24,000 people at the moment. There we go. So it's qu quite a few. Get an email every Tuesday morning uh, with deals. Um, we'll run through in detail the systems to minimise your, your personal time. Uh, the expense input is, is brilliant because um, everything I'll show you how to do, it will, I do for free. Or, or it's done for free at no cost to you. So let's say a website, we obviously um, build your website, um, takes about an hour, but you can do this yourself, takes about an hour, no HTML experience whatsoever. Um, on the day you can leave with one if you want to, so I'll give you a little demo of how to do it. Um, or you can take it away with you and spend some time doing something else. Um, but you can have a website for free. And CRM you can get for free. And, and this sorts, there's lots of things that I do everything for free. And once you've done a couple of deals, um, you can put money into the bits that you think deserve more money. So if you want a better website, because obviously one for free is not going to win any design awards, um, you can put some money into it later on down the line as you 
as you bring in cash flow and selling deals. So, how to replace your current income in 30 to 90 days, and that's kind of vital because you've got to put a time limit on this um, to make sure it works. So, in my four week plan, we'll go through in a bit of detail. So, you get a deal on the table on day 28, and, and I'll chase you to, to get the deal on the table in, by day 28 because I want you to succeed, and it's in my interest to make you succeed because we're going to be JV and um, or we might be JV later on, and it normally happens about two months later. Um, <clears throat> I'll get a call, and the call usually, usually starts the same way every time. Mark, I've got this deal, and then we might discuss it, and we might JV on it, and, and sell it together, and make some money together. So I need you to, um, I want you to succeed. Have the deal on the table within 20 days. Replacing your income in 30 to 90, if you want to, and of course, uh, property stores and manual. Some of you will know what that is. Um, we'll include that on the day and work through that as well. So, uh, it's actually the building blocks of your property business. So, um, we're going to put some building blocks in place uh, to make sure you can make money out of it um, right from the get go. So, what's the what's the cost of all this? Well, normally we charge uh, nine nine five for the property uh, for for a day. Uh, that's one to one. We've got eight places on the 10th of the 8th, it's a Saturday, so it's a weekend day. There's 96 people on the web, on the webinar. Um, normal price with one to one day is 995. And the loop log chart, going through it, making sure it, it works, so that'll take us about an hour, plus some role plays, 394. Trouble and conversion rate template is 149. All the legals and scripts, getting them all yourself with 599. And then we'll run through my manual um, in chapter form, six chapters. That's £49. And what we're going to go through are oh, the agenda for the day. It's a loose agenda because we'll work to the, to, to, the, uh, to, the, to the course. We're going to do the importance of planning, so we'll do the four week plan in, in a little bit of detail. Uh, we'll research your parts, again, bring in the maps, and we'll, we'll go through your patch and where the places are to go and get the deals. Some flyers that work, you can choose them. We'll go through finding deals, where they are. What marketing suits your deal is, and I'll show you a couple of patches where we started with newspapers and went on to leaflets, then we swapped and did something else. So which, what sort of marketing would work for your patch? Um, you'll have to leave with the website if you want one. you leave with a customer a CRM system or customer relationship management system set up for free, ready to go. Uh, we'll deal with appointments and making them and we'll do a couple of role plays and have a bit of fun around that. Uh, we'll do some vendor visits and scripts and again we'll do a couple of role plays. Uh, if I've got any leads in that day, we'll actually call real uh, real vendor leads. Um, and sometimes I'll have a bit of a giggle over that um, because we'll, there's only us in the room, so we'll get it wrong, I'm sure. Uh, but I still get it wrong now. Um, so we'll have a bit of a giggle over doing that. We'll run through packaging deals so you can sell them uh, later on and we'll run through completions and the power team and how to use them um, uh, during your deals. So we'll just go through the prices. There's, Eight places left for December. I can only take eight, so it's like a small group, and we've already sold some places. So, uh, so we've got a small group. Nine ninety is uh, an all price. Three nine four for the uh, conversion. Lead qualifying template one nine nine. A hundred example newspaper adverts that you can use, copy, tape. We're not precious about them. No commitment worth. It's ninety nine pounds for them. Lead template templates uh, one four nine. Qualifying templates. Uh, 249, access to my database of 24,000 people to market your leads or deals to, well that's kind of... Priceless. Priceless, yeah, I, mean, I can't really put a cost on that. But totally, um, a realistic value of £2,080. Um, so all this stuff um, for the 78th has uh, got a total realistic value of £2,080. That's just without the, um, without the access to the data to sell deals that you don't want anyway. What I'm going to do tonight, because uh, John's forced me to do it, is I'm going to do a no-brainer offer. Um, so you can all come on the day at a daft price, which is 199 Cool. So it's £199 for to come day. on a whole day. Lunch included. Full day. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe lunch included as well. Uh, I'm Good afraid luck. it is. I'm afraid right, it is. Lunch. No such thing as a free lunch, but there's proof that there is. Right, okay, so it's, uh, and that's lunch included together, everything that I've just mentioned um, on the day, plus 
there's a 100% cast iron money back guarantee. That means if you don't uh, I think it's a value by lunchtime, all you need to do is hand, hand you your cost work in and the products that have already given you and it's going to send cast time way back down to for the day. Because what I do is I believe in what, we, what, what we're teaching here and I believe in um, you know what we're doing in the product. And you don't have to believe me, I'm a very good believer, I'm a very good firm believer in testimonials and I've just put on the screen there a bunch of testimonials about what we're doing and what we're teaching from industry people, not from outsiders. So uh, that's Richard Shepherd, host of Manchester PNC. Rick Mobbs, who's an investor in Manchester, John Case, which uh, he's an investor in Manchester, Cyril Thomas, Essex Property League, Spike, who was one of the biggest pin meetings in the country, uh, Yvonne M Emery over in Cambridge, and Richard Kerrison there, uh, who hosts the pin over in Norwich there, so a couple of testimonials, just so it's just not me saying this, it's um, other people as well. Just so a few fine. people are asking where the course is, it's a holiday in in Maidenhead where the Berkshire Property meet, meets, so it's quite sort of central to most people. Yeah, it's easy to get to just down the uh, bottom of the 404 there, where it joins the uh, M4. Yeah. So one day training course, 199 on the 8th of December, it's on a Saturday, it's plus all the bonuses and uh, the money back guarantee. And of course there's only eight places left on there. Just to go through that just one more time, it's the lead flow chat at 199, trouble your conversion rate template at 199, lead coin plan template at 149, all the paperwork and contracts to do a deal at 599. Total realistic value of 2,080 quid for a no-brainer offer of £199, including lunch. Just getting some questions coming in, really, Mark. I mean, the time the time is going to be a full-on day. I, um, two of Mark's successful days, really. Um, we've sort of shoehorned as much as we can possibly into a whole day here. So it is going to be really starting on the dot at 9 o'clock. I mean, we, we can't wait for anyone. It's going to, you know, there's tea and coffee. Um, breakfast on arrival, breakfast butty or something like that, bacon roll or something like that. Um, so it's going to start on the dot at 9 o'clock and it'll probably go to 6 with a short break. So um, I hope that answers every yes. question. So it's a real 9 to 6 day. Uh, I just think it's, I think it's a couple of things springs to mind. It's it's a perfect time to be doing this sort of thing. We've just got 20,000 leaflets gone out um, uh, in, in a couple of areas we're working. But I just think to go on this, learn all the systems, have, you know, take all the shortcuts and then be able to sort of take two or three weeks to start planning your campaign ready to hit all the doors and the houses in the new year. I think it's just going to come at a better time, really. There's a lot of pressure on people come January, February, and you really want your um, your stuff hitting their mats. So um, that's really one of the areas, uh, aims of, of the objectives of the evening is to get the timing, is to set you, you know, you can come in, Mark, as Mark's alluded to earlier, and he's got a vested interest in you succeeding because um, you know it's a very powerful offer that if you get a deal and you want to move it on you can um, pick up the phone and talk to Mark. So do you want to add anything to that Mark? Yeah it will be full on day because I, mean, I, I do put a lot into these days. I'm actually doing a one-to-one -to -one tomorrow um, and it's up in the northwest so I've got a what, 250 mile drive. I'll get there by breakfast. It's a full day till, till every single question is exhausted that comes out and then a 250 mile drive back. So I do put a lot lot of effort into these days um, because I want people to succeed and, and, and of course I want testimonials for the next one and, and get it bigger and bigger and bigger and, and teach a lot of people as well. So uh, for everyone on the webinar tonight, I'd be honoured to work with you um, in the future on JV deals or helping you with your deals and, and getting through not only just to make uh, you money but it also makes us money as well. Um, in the future, because we can JV on the deals and uh, get them forward, and it gives me a, you know, a network. It's not altruistic, so it gives me a network of people that are supplying me deals that we can send out and both make money together. So, um, so I'd love you to join us on the eighth. Um, I look forward to meeting you all. A bit. It, 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 it's an intense day, but a fun day because we've actually got about two days worth of material shoehorned into one day. So it's a, it, it, you know, it will be a. a It'll be, be a lot of work, <laughs> but but you'll absolutely love it, and I love this stuff anyway. So no, I think I think you, you hit the nail on the head. It's I mean it's a good time to do it. Um, I've put the link for the for the booking page uh, in in the window, so obviously you can see that as a URL there, so you can click on that and grab your place. Um, I, I think one of the, the main things it's it's um, the, the content. I would like just to take an opportunity to thank Mark tonight. I mean I've obviously been listening in and um, chirp, chirping in a little bit, but it's just very very good. 
content. I mean, one of the aims is to get a lot of value from the um, for, to, to give a lot of value effectively from the from the webinar tonight. And I think you can massive tick there. And thanks to Mark for that. Um, but just to drill down, going through all what Mark's covered tonight, having having access to Mark for the whole day, and obviously all his information system and everything like that. Um, so should be really, really good. Just got a couple of questions if you can um, answer them. I think most of them have been, but um, typical duration that you do a lease option over, Mark? Uh, I do 12 years. Right, you do 12 years. I know some people sort of have this figure of seven years in their head and some people do the end of, to the end of the mortgage. Um, but um, do, just, yeah. yeah, I just thought I'd chuck that in. Uh, someone asked about your power team, but you've covered that all, already by obviously, he was saying how would he build his own power team? Well, I'm sure you'll go through that on the day, but um, the, flip yeah, side is, the flip side is got access to yours, which is a win-win there, really. Um, mm -hmm. And um, the other question we got asked early on was, um, do you use Property B to target houses or areas or you know specific places? I am actually, I don't know what what I do. In all honesty, I use an OS map, right? And I, get, I put the OS map on the table and I start marking out areas because I know what type of property and I know what to look for on the maps. And I'll show you how to do this. It's, it's actually fairly simple. In lease option deals, uh, if I was looking for lease option deals because my money's tied up in a flip or somewhere else, then I'd go for the estates with cul de sacs, you know, the kind of uh, the semis and the detached houses and stuff because you get a lot of lease option deals out of there. But for BMV deals, I target um, terraced houses because that's the ones I'm buying, so two and three bed terraces. And you can tell what they look like on, on uh, OS maps quite clearly. It's a, it's a lot better than Google. I think we've got one of the best mapping systems in the world in England or in, or in the UK um, because you can pull out a one to 50,000, which is a five from uh, you know one of the bookshops, and you can see your patch staring at you um, almost in the face um, when you start to look at a map. And, and if you go down to Google, uh, the, the closest Google you get is street, uh, down to street level. It doesn't have to get down to house level unless you go to street view, which doesn't give you an aerial view, it just gives you a kind of walk around the street. But in a West map, what it does, it gives you an aerial view um, of the streets, uh, which is just, it's fabulous, absolutely fabulous. So, so yeah, I use OS maps. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, it's going to be. I think. I think another thing is obviously when you've got a good compact group as well. Um, you, you know, so much shared information between the group. I mean, that's why these workshops work really, really well. So um, I'm really excited about the day. Um, that's obviously you're putting on through the through the Property Investment Academy. So um, right, I just want to wrestle control back and just go through some um, other little things that have. Um, again, make sure you book tonight because those places are going to go. And um, and I think I thank Mark for giving us such a generous offer. Really, it's a lot of information, a lot of content on that. So um, there's another question there. Just basically, do you target properties that are on the market, or just send out leaflets to all houses? We we'll just give that a last question. Uh, yes and no. I um, I, t I target an area rather than a, rather than houses for sale. But what there's a great um, I'll go through this on day more detail, but there's a great service run by the Royal Mail called the Door-to-Door -door Service, and you can sign up with the Door-to-Door -door Service. You don't have to buy anything, but you go through their process, and uh, when you've got all the way through their process, they'll give you the doors to uh, on the pass that you've requested, and they can give you all the information for your leaflets and for your marketers and for yourself on on your patch. And I mean, I'll go through this in more detail uh, on the day because we've got time tonight, but you can get tons of information on your patch straight away and then when you hand the doors, I call them doors, when you hand the doors to the leafleters um, to market, uh, you can get them to uh, give you all the houses that are for sale uh, as a way of managing the leafleters for one and for a, another campaign which is called a three letter campaign for the houses that are for sale. And I'll go through the three letter campaign as well, it's a fairly simple process but um, it does um, it buys you more deals because they've been on the market, and then you can go back to property me once you know all all the houses for sale in the area, and target them with a different campaign. So, yeah, there's there's a couple of ways that we'll go through. Oh, I think that's brilliant. It's a brilliant offer. I mean, the fact that, you, like you say, people can book on the course, come along, and if they think it's not for them by lunchtime, they can just hand everything back in and and disappear, and we get a full refund. I mean, you just can't yeah. say fairer yeah. than that. And it's just yeah, uh, absolutely. It's brilliant. Well, that's great. Um, we're just going to just cover a couple of little things. As again, with regards to the Property Investment Academy, there's a couple of things that are going on um, over the 
the weeks and months ahead. So I just wanted to click, um, just click through those before we sort of let Mark go and get his cocoa. Um, so um, basically, we've got we've got on the 29th of November at the Bucks Property Meet. Um, the main speaker there is Sharon Wright, who's off of Dragon's Den. Uh, she's a, the person that delivered the perfect pitch. Um, so if you've got a free evening, then come along for a full-on property night there. David Humphreys, um, one of the main co-founders of the of the Property Investor Academy, is doing a pre-meet there. So that's strategy to help you become financially free. It's different strategies you can put in place uh, so you can eventually kick your job into touch. Uh, and then you can check that out on the Bucks Property Meet. And then on the 8th of December, we've got that awesome day that Mark's talked about earlier tonight, which is just going to be jam-packed so you really need to get a good night's sleep before and probably bring a couple of pads because that is going to really kick off your day uh, um, and sort of start your, your next year 2013 just right on the uh, right vein really and then 10th of December David Humphreys is talking at the Surrey Property Exchange which is Richard Simmons meet so it's over in uh, Guildford another great venue and a great property meet there's 21 laws and regulations you need to know and that's the website for that, so Surrey Property Exchange. And on the 12th of December, um, we're running the tax-free rent module again, or workshop again. That's probably third or fourth time it's happened now. Uh, go, to, go into YouTube, um, type it in, see some of the testimonials on that, some really powerful testimonials from people like Richard Bowser, Cyril Thomas, and uh, Mark. You've been on that, haven't you, Mark? You found it a pretty, pretty packed day. That was, uh, my head was busting after that one, <laughs> it was brilliant. <laughs> so, um, and there's um, obviously a, um, a booking page there, but um, really it's just, that's pretty much it for, for the evening. I mean, it's um, been an awesome night. So, um, I would like to say thanks for everybody that's um, given us time tonight. And... Um, I'm sure there'll be people booking on the course to grab the last few places. Um, but I think it was a brilliant, from, our, from my point of view, Mark, I you know, really extend a big thanks because you've just gone through a great webinar, lots of content on there. I'm sure lots of things that people can use immediately and um, be great drilling down on them um, in, a, in a few well, a week or so's time, isn't it? A week to 10 days' time. Brilliant job. Just like to ask everybody, if you enjoyed the webinar and there's enough content on there, please put a post on Facebook and say so, because I'd like to make sure everyone that possibly can have access to this um, can do it. So put a yeah. pop something on Facebook and say, you know, they enjoyed it or it was good content. If it was rubbish, then please tell me in private. <laughs> but, yeah, that would be better. So. But thanks, thanks for all your time tonight. I enjoyed doing it. I love doing this sort of stuff anyway. Um, and I look forward to working with you on the, on the 8th of December um, at the holiday in, in Maidenhead. Yeah, no, it's great, and I think that's a good point about it. I mean, pop it in there. There's a, a Facebook group. There's a lot of property Facebook groups. Um, you know, you've got the, um, the the BMV group. Top, you know, just spread the word, really. I and mean, the aim is to make sure that people get access to these free webinars um, and learn lots about things that Mark's doing. He's an expert in this field, and it's the aim is really just to help you move your property journey on forward, really. So um, thanks for that, really. Right. Um, well, that's really that's really it. So we can let Mark go and get his cocoa. And a big thanks to everybody again. Uh, and I'd like to look forward to seeing you a lot of you on the um, the eighth of December or before at the Bucks. So um, thanks, thanks a big thanks again, Mark. I know you're shy a lot of the time, so it's you know big big effort for you to come out of the woodwork here. <laughs> you're shy and retiring, Mark. I answer. I'm but, indeed. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for coming. That's all right. Good evening, everyone, and thanks very much. Good night.